Shutting the hell up and enjoying the show. chat so people can go and catch up on it after part two welcome if you are new and you're just playing catch up or y'all just here from the for the chat from patreon okay shout out to patreon all right they, they listen they saw everything early so they just here watching y'all just get shocked and everything okay now um uh, before we get started okay we have to pay the bills which means we have to shout out our sponsors, which means boldly raise a glass to let's go ahead. Model and Eve.com. I'm talking toys, bondage, lingerie, and so much more. Plus they have 24 seven customer service. So you can order at 3 a.m. If you ain't coming, if you get me. Okay. And if something isn't working out, you can send it back within 90 days. No hassle. And if that's not enough, you can also take pleasure in knowing that 20% of their profits goes to help fight the spread of HIV around the world. So go on ahead and log on to adamandeve.com. Use the code Tasha K for 50% off one item plus free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. Some exclusions apply now, but hurry up and visit adamandeve.com so they can make you come. See, I enjoy oral sex, but to be honest, some of my experiences have been not pleasing due to lack of proper vaginal hygiene. I went down on this chick once. And the yoni was so good and fresh. It took me on like a whole nother level of just pleasure. So at that moment, I had to stop and ask, what are you using? And she told me, embrace Pangea Feminine Wash. We all know that a fresh yoni brings on a whole new level of confidence. So visit EmbracePangea.com. And of course, I got my winos covered for a discount. So use the coupon code Tasha K for 10% off your first order. Let's put the wine down for a second because at times like this, we need to take a shot of the olive leaf extract because the olive leaf boosts our immune system and it has been known to reverse high blood pressure, lupus, diabetes, and certain cancers. Check them out at myoliveleaf.biz to learn more and to order or simply click the link below in the description box. Now back to the wine. All right, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> I have to take a break for a second. I'm going to play the commercials and I will be right back, okay? One minute, all right? Give me one second. Go ahead, play it again. Right back. Let's put the wine down for a second because at times like this, we need to take a shot of the olive leaf extract because the olive leaf boosts our immune system and it has been known to reverse high blood pressure, lupus, diabetes, and certain cancers. Check them out at myoliveleaf.biz to learn more and to order or simply click the link below in the description box. Now back to the wine. AdamandEve.com. I'm talking toys, bondage, lingerie, and so much more. Plus, they have 24-7 customer service, so you can order at 3 a.m. if you ain't coming, if you get me, okay? And if something isn't working out, you can send it back within 90 days, no hassle. And if that's not enough, you can also take pleasure in knowing that 20% of their profits goes to help fight the spread of HIV around the world. So go on ahead and log on to AdamandEve.com. Use the code Tasha Okay, for 50% off one item plus free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. Some exclusions apply now, but hurry up and visit adamandeve.com so they can make you come. See, I enjoy oral sex, but to be honest, some of my experiences have been not pleasing due to lack of proper vaginal hygiene. I went down on this chick once, and the yoni was so good and fresh. It took me on like a whole nother level of just pleasure. So at that moment, I had to stop and ask, what are you using? And she told me, embrace Pangea Feminine Wash. We all know that a fresh yoni brings on a whole new level of confidence. So visit EmbracePangea.com. And of course, I got my winos covered for a discount. So use the coupon code Tasha K for 10% off your first order. All right, I see 
see you guys are coming up in here heavy. I have to start on time because a lot of people got their reminders set, okay? So y'all just got to give me five minutes. If you do have some questions, okay, put them in the comment section. I'll be dozing over. Please, guys, if you are not subscribed to my Patreon, you need to be, okay? Um... Everybody gets first dibs on what comes to the channel. Some of it may not come to the channel, depending on the severity of the said allegations or whatnot. Um, also, I got some strong wine on Monica, the singer, and C. Murder, as well as Master P, okay? This is a live audio. Um, when are we going to be dropping this? Monday? Tuesday? Okay, we're going to be dropping it. I think Tuesday, to say the least, because that's the next time. Well, I, I do go live on Patreon um, tomorrow night, okay, at 7 p.m., and we got some wine that we're going to be spilling um, over there as well. But as far as the C Murder, Monica, and Master P wine, I think we're going to drop that on Tuesday. We got to clean it up, okay? So we got to make sure you guys can hear the audio and things like that. So um, that's going to be uh, – I don't know what – Oh, because I got to build commentary. Okay, so the live audio is going to be on Patreon only. However, I'm going to bring the wine, okay, verbally in commentary to YouTube. So don't get don't don't get mad like, oh, my God, you gave everything to Patreon. Well, we have to sort things out legally now, okay? We're a big blog now. You understand? We're not a small blog. We're a big blog. So we got to make sure it's sorted out. And usually when it comes to audios and stuff like that, anybody can change their mind and say, you know what, I don't want it anymore. And then it's all of a sudden a privacy violation and stuff like that. And so um, just in order to take safety measures, um, just to protect our work, you know, we got people that are working for us and everybody wants to keep their job, including, including me. We're just going to make sure that we just do things the right way. So you'll get the live audio on Patreon and I will bring you the exclusive details here, probably during a fuckery Friday or uh, during the week show. Um, during the week, okay? And so, let me see. Listen, I'm not doing Monica no type of way. Y'all, listen, I when I heard these details, I was like, what? I couldn't believe, I was like, not Monica. Not, here we are face to face with the memories that can't be erased. Although we need each other, things have changed. It's not the same. Oh, man, I was like, not Monica. Oh, child, Monica is a firecracker. I had no idea. I had no idea, okay? And so I will bring the wine verbally to you on YouTube. But if y'all want to hear the real deets, y'all got to go on over to the Patreon and pay that $15, okay? All right. Um, Jamie Strickland, we, we, we do things for money over here, okay? I don't know what you do for money, but we do things for money over here, okay? I am not afraid to say that, nor have I ever tried to hide that. So, yes, yes. Kibbe Studios is a for-hire, for-profit uh, production company. Um, thank you, guys. Yes, part two is really juicy. Um, let me see. Okay. Auntie Hammy smoked Babs. What? Y'all gonna leave my Auntie Hammy alone. Um, Jaguar upset all over social media. Yes, Jaguar is so upset. Jaguar called her mom and recorded her mother without permission. And listen, if you guys can just hold out to part three, whenever we're done with this, if you haven't watched part one, watch part one. Okay. Moderators, please share the link to part one so that people that are coming in now can watch it. But once you get to part three, and you go over to Jaguar Wright's Instagram, okay, or YouTube. YouTube, she turned off the comments. Instagram, they are dragging her. She recorded her mom, okay, without permission. And let me tell you, this behavior is very familiar to the behavior that you're going to see exclusively here in part two or part three. I'm not sure. You're going to see a little bit of it in part two, but part three, we're going to bring it all the way home, okay? And with that, with that being said, okay, thank you all so much for your patience and your love. I'm going to let y'all go ahead and watch part two while I go upstairs and make these chicken salad sandwiches for this party, okay? I'll see y'all in a minute. Bye! This woman was so aggressive with me that if I describe how she treated me in 2020, they'd be like, oh, she sexually harassed you.
2020 has been a rough one for everyone, but it seems to have taken a toll on Wright. Her Instagram bio reads, I am, that's all. Many questions will be answered this year. My goal is to become the queen of transparency. Stay tuned, writes Jaguar Wright. You know, I, I'm gonna say it right now, cause I think part of the reason why I had that nervous breakdown is because I've been carrying 20 years of lies for someone else's benefit and not for my own. Wright started off going off on a barrage of musicians this summer, the tirade apparently triggered by the death of Malik B from The Roots. Since then, she has made a series of videos where she goes after Erica Badu, Mary J. Blige, Jill Scott, Tiffany Haddish, who she eventually apologized to, and comment to name a few. Allegations range from sexual abuse to betrayal to family drama, and it appears as if no one is safe from Wright's wrath. All of her outbursts have raised some questions, with many of her fans questioning her mental health and stability. If you want to talk on somebody's goddamn mental health, then you better speak correct. Do not, do not play me like that. While many believe that there may be some truth to what she is saying, they also think that the way she is going about delivering her message is an indication of a mental health crisis. However, this is not the first time Jaguar Wright has made the news for controversy. In 2016, she was arrested and charged with child abduction of her youngest child, and she has a history of unstable relationships. Additionally, there may be some merit to her fans' concerns about her mental health, as her son Giovanni was murdered in a hotel park parking lot in 2018, and losing a child takes a serious mental and emotional toll on anyone. Whether Jaguar's rants are healing troop sessions or just typical entertainment drama, one thing is for certain, she's gotten lots of attention on social media, and with that being said, I've taken the time to interview some of her relatives to have a better understanding of her dilemma. Grab your wine. What was it like growing up with Jackie, Jacqueline? Right. So um, we were pretty close as kids. We probably started really bonding, I'm gonna say around five or six. Um, her mom, which is my Aunt Frances, would come and get me um, for the summer. Mm -hmm. And we would go to um, New Jersey, which is where she was born and raised. Not Philadelphia. She's not from but Philadelphia. But she's told the entire world that she was, she's you know from Philadelphia, born and raised. She was in a studio with Gerald Levert in Philadelphia, like this is... That came later on in life, but she was not born and raised in Philadelphia. She came to Philadelphia via way of my mom, who had taken temporary custody of her because she wasn't getting along with her parents. Okay. And that was around the age of around 13, because I remember she started going to high school in Philadelphia. She went to William Penn in ninth grade. That lasted maybe three months, and my mom got frustrated with her behavior, um, which is the same behavior that we really see today on YouTube and everywhere else, and my mom decided to send her back home. Okay. So my mom had taken temporary custody um, of Jackie as a favor to the parents to try to keep their house quiet and try to get Jackie under some kind of control. Mm. Um, I mean, there's so much that she said. Now, I, of course, I've spoken to her ex-husband, Sam mm -hmm. Odom. I've also speak, uh, spoken to her only living son, little Sam. Is that what you guys call him? Sammy. Yeah, Sammy. Okay. Or Deuce. Mm -hmm. Okay, Deuce. Okay, I've Deuce, heard that yeah. name. And I was like, who's Deuce? Yeah. That's okay, that's nice. Now you and little Sammy right. grew up together. We grew up together, correct. My grandma, she raised him at one point. Okay. Um, you know, my aunt's career was going, she was on the road, things like that. So we were raised with Sammy. Okay. Yeah. Um, also my brother, Giovanni, as you see. Oh, okay. Which is That's... Jaguar, Jackie's other son. Okay. What was her relationship like with him? Um, wouldn't say they really had one, you know? Wow. My cousin, yeah, my brother, he passed away and they didn't have no relationship. They didn't talk for two to three years. The last thing she said to him was, you're dead to me. What? Wait a minute. Her last, like, I mean, her, like, firstborn son. Right. Giovanni. Is now deceased. Right. Okay. You call him your brother. You, right. He, he's your brother because you guys grew up together. We're, yeah. Um, she told her son that, you know, you're you're dead to me. You're dead to me. They stopped talking for three years or so. Yeah. It was to the point where, you know, at one point, you know, he had an apartment. She lived around the corner. They would see each other, you know, in crossing. Didn't speak. No relationship. He called her Jackie. Didn't call her mom. So she never raised him? No. My grandma did. Okay. 
which is, you know, her aunt Frances, my grandma. Okay. okay. Now, of course, I would like to ask you questions more about him, but he's passed now. Right. He's like deceased and, you know, he's not here, I guess, to <clears throat> speak on it for himself. Right. But I'm glad you just, you pointed that out because, um, you know, that says, I, I just can imagine like being a mother and telling my, my child, like, you know, you're dead to yeah. me. It hurt um, his feelings. You know, um, before he passed away, you know, his birthday was the fifth. He's a Virgo and he called me and my sister and he was just like, you know, my mom didn't even wish me a happy birthday. Okay. Wow. So it hurt him. Now, um, Jaguar has said some interesting things about your dad, mm -hmm. who is, who was, okay, married to mm -hmm. Jackie's sister. She said that like your dad raped her before <laughs> You're laughing. Because <laughs> it's hilarious to me. It's really hilarious to me. My dad raped you. Girl, what? Yeah, she said that, like, you know, your dad raped her. And one of them was my sister's husband, but he wasn't her husband at the time. She married him after I told her that he raped me. And oh. I had to be in the wedding. And oh. I had to sit and watch my father walk my sister down the aisle to my rapist who was had a shit eating grill like a Cheshire cat. And it was oh. all sanctioned by my mother. How old were you when your sister? I was brother, 15. I mean, a uh, husband. I was, when I get what, who? When your sister's husband, before he became I was 15. Husband. I was 14 and a half going on 15. He was 25. And he raped you? Yeah. I was asleep in her place. I was hiding from my dad because me and my dad had been beefing. She was still stripping at some um, trailer park trash place up the Northeast where all the drug addicts went. And um, he was supposed to have been going out of town. I went to the apartment. To just hide from dad. Uh, she told me I could stay tonight. I was like, I don't know. Not if your man going to be around because I ain't like the way he looked at me. She said, no, he's going to Atlanta with Chris and Hilton and all of them. So you're fine. I got to the house. I, like I said, I always sleep with my clothes on if I'm not at home. Mm -hmm. If I'm not at home in my bed, I ain't taking my clothes off around nobody. Mm. Still 43. And I'm still like that. So, yeah, when I woke up, he was on top of me. He had pulled down my pants, rigged them around my ankle so I couldn't get away. Um, he oh. was already inside of me. He was smelled like crack and malt liquor, saying every kind of nasty thing that you could possibly think of about how, how long he had been waiting for that moment. And I'm coming out of my sleep like this. I fought him off of me. I got one of my legs out. I ran track. I made it about a half a mile. Before I could get dressed, and then I stopped. I was half, I was half dressed. I was half naked. Um, got dressed. I ran for about two miles until I, I caught the uh, five fifty four bus back to the town where we lived in at the time, and um, ran to my mom. When I told my mom, my mom was like, "You know, if I was you, I wouldn't say anything to your sister." I said, "What are you talking about? He's a fucking monster. This is what he done to me." She said, "Well, you know, women don't like hearing bad things about their men, mm. huh?" I'm like, no, hell no. Then the next thing you know, I go talk to my sister. This, this, it can't go down. You cannot marry him. He's a monster. I'm telling you, this can't happen. Well, we'll see what he has to say about it. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. What the fuck do you mean you'll see what he has? To, he's, what the, I'm telling you, take me to the hospital. Take me to the police. Tell him. I wasn't allowed to go to the police. I wasn't allowed to go to the hospital. My father was lied to and told that if I came to him, I was making it all up because I was jealous she was getting married. They spread that story around my entire family. They ostracized me and then still made me be in the wedding for optics. I had to sing the Lord's fucking prayer at that sham of a wedding. And people wonder why I got drunk and ran away from home and didn't come back till I was pregnant. I didn't come back till I was pregnant because I knew that was the only way he wouldn't touch me. Because, see, I had to live with my rapist after that. What do you think about some of the things that she said about your dad? Well, that's a lie. You know, let's be clear. You know, my mom and my dad, they had a good relationship. Didn't work out. Things happened. But my Aunt Jackie, she loved it there. She sung at the wedding because she wanted to sing there. No one forced her. You know, that rape allegation is a lie. You know, she told people that in the family because, you know, she was jealous of my mom. My mom was getting married and she just was upset. You know, she felt like... I always, she always says all the time, you left me, you chose him over me because she wanted to live with my mom and my mom was getting married. My mom left my grandmother's home and went to move in with her husband as she should. And she was upset about that. My dad ain't raped that girl. 
she's a liar. She has, you know, issues. I don't know why she feels like every guy my mom has been with wants her, but yeah, definitely not the case. I've, I've caught some of the inconsistencies um, surrounding, I guess, how many times she's been raped and sexually assaulted. Um, I've caught her saying that she was a pimp. And then at the same time, she was a sexual assault victim. I mean, it's just so much. And so it, I just kind of wanted to ask you what you thought about that allegation. It's all cat. She said this to everyone in the family and we all do the same thing. Voila, why didn't you call 911? If this happened, why mm -hmm. didn't you call 911? Why yeah. would you sing in the wedding? You're all smiles. You're all smiles at the wedding. You didn't call 911. You loved my dad, you know? Yeah. He was a part of the family. Why didn't you call 911? Why wait until now, you know? She told me this one time, I think I was maybe around 10 or 11. She's drunk. I'm, a, I'm you know, I'm assuming on some type of drugs. Mm. She said, your father raped me. I said, huh? <laughs> your father raped me. I asked my mom about it. And my mom was just like, Jamie, I don't know why she, you know, lies. You know, this is something that she's been saying for quite some time. No one in the family ever believed her because, you know, like I said, my dad was, he played a big part in his family. My dad loves her. My dad loves Mom Belinda. Mm -hmm. You know, Aww. my uncle Donald just passed away. My dad was the first person to send money. It was never that. Yeah. It's just, you know, once again, my aunt, unfortunately, she tends to lie. She's very delusional. My dad's a hardworking man. You know, he's a business owner. That man never raped her. They weren't even around each other enough for that to even happen, if that makes any sense. My okay. aunt was like, you know, running the streets. You know, she was 14, 15, trying to, you know, be a rapper. That's mm. what she was doing. Rapper. Yeah. Okay. She wanted to be a rapper. Mm -hmm. So you guys are like, re well, you're not close now. But we're you were close very close. Okay? We were very close. Okay, now, um, who is Jackie's mom to you? Okay, so Jackie's mom is my first aunt, Aunt Frances. Okay. Um, now, she said some pretty disturbing things about her mom mm -hmm. on camera. She said that her mom was schizophrenic. Her mom pretty much dismissed the rape allegation uh, concerning her sister's husband at the time because she was schizophrenic. That's when we realized exactly... Um, how divisive my mother and my sister had been in the misinformation and the disinformation that they shared around the house to cover my sister's drug addiction and the fact that my mother's schizophrenic. See, my mother's schizophrenic and my sister's a drug addict. And I was the baby in the house. Is uh, your Aunt Frances schizophrenic? No, she is not. She's never been diagnosed with schizophrenia. Schizophrenia, I'm sorry. Um, I do know that um, she has definitely um, gone through some uh, mental distress okay. in her life. Um, I watched her raise Jackie, and it was not easy. Um, Jackie has always been, unfortunately, a troubled person. Um, I can think back to when we were kids, and you would have Aunt Frances or Shelly, that's Jamie's mom, okay. calling, Aunt Belinda, guess what happened? Or Aunt Frances, oh, Belinda... Jackie's not doing well. The cops just came and picked her up and put her in a stray jacket. Um, so she's been in that white suit where they put your arms and tie you your yourself to you so mm -hmm. you can't go crazy. She's been in one of those before. Um, I saw a YouTube video where she said she was never 302. Okay, so whatever they call or whatever would be similar to a 302 in Jersey, that's happened to her before. And she was a child. Okay, Um there was also a moment when she was pregnant with Giovanni, the son that was murdered. Okay. Her father uh, chastised her about something. She got very angry with him and she uh, dug a hole. She went out in the yard with a shovel, dug a hole in the ground and buried that man's suit, his work suit in that, in that uh, hole. She dug the hole, dropped the suit in there and buried it. Okay, so these are things, all this acting out and stuff we're seeing on YouTube, you know, all these people that she's talking about that she has a problem with on YouTube, we've all watched this go down since she's been a child. It's really been um, a lot for all of us. We kind of try to sit back and just let it resolve itself. And, you know, it's to the point now where we, we need to address it. Are you surprised at how she's turned out now? No, honestly, I'm not. Um, it, I want to say that, you know, since a child, it's something that we always saw coming. Okay. We, we, I think a lot of the family saw this coming. Um, I feel like it was only a matter of time. For every L she takes, she's going to get worse and worse and worse. And when I say L, I mean a loss. You know, something's not going her way. Um, you know, she's not as successful as she wants to be. So this is definitely something that we saw coming. We were really close. 
as um, kids, even through our early adulthood, we were very close. I was very close to her and spent a lot of time with her in the studio and watched her make great music. She's very talented, but at the same time, she definitely is, she's a self-destruct type person. Mm. You wanted to say something? Yeah, so um, I could definitely speak on that. Am I surprised with how she is right now? No, I mean, you know, she never had a job. Let's be clear, you know, after um, whatever she was doing with the singing career um, took off, you know, she had a little moment that ended very quickly. And, you know, Ma has never worked. You know, like I told you, you know, my grandma raised my my brother, Giovanni, my cousin. You know, she had Sammy majority of the time. That lady never had a job. Mm. This is something, you know, that she's just like every L she takes. It just gets worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Not surprised at all. Okay. You know. Now she's always in the car. Always mm -hmm. going live from the car. She's with her, I guess, new husband now. Mm -hmm. um, how is she making money? Okay, well, mm -hmm. to speak on the car situation, you know, she loves it there. She lives there, you know. Um, currently, Where's there? She lives there. In the car? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, um, so they had a home. Homeless. They had a home. Um, her husband... Her husband's people were like renting to them from what I know. And that ended, you know, quickly. So now they're on the road. Don't know where they're going, but yeah, they're on the car. Her, her husband and the dog. Look at King. Hey, King. Oh my God. Why are you pissing on the coop? I tried. I tried. Basically, my grandma does not have access to any of her funds. My this is Jackie's mom, right? My okay, Francis, Francis. the schizophrenic, right? Okay. <laughs> she takes all of her money. She's been doing it for years now. You know, it got to a point where her and you know my brother will argue over my grandma's money because my aunt will try to take my grandma's money every time she got paid. And you know, my brother would be like, you know, you can't do this. We need this money for the bills. Why are you taking her money? Well, now at this point, she just has the money being deposited in her account. And so that's how her and Gerald are living off my grandmom's money. My grandma, my grandma has $20 to her name right now because she just called my mom and asked for money. Right. She has no money. And it's crazy because she gets how much a month? Like $6,000 yeah. for retirement? And she's in, you would think that she would look way better than how she's looking on, on, on YouTube, but she's spending this on, I'm assuming on liquor and, you know, drugs, who knows, who knows, but she's spending all of her money. She gets like $6,000 a month. And she's taking her mom's right money. Correct. And her and Gerald are living off of it. So, right. I mean, in if it's $6,000, like why can't she get a place to stay? And she had Why a place. in the car? Who knows? Her I don't credit's know probably doing. not good at this point. I mean, I know that when her career started to tank and she started losing everything because she went gung ho with buying this grand old Aces $500,000 house. Um, as soon as she got her check, I'll never forget. She came to get me when she got her first um, advance from the record label. MCA, I think is who she was with. Mm -hmm. She came to me, hype, Chris, come outside. Look what I got. She had got the Jaguar S type, you know, fit her name. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice car, you know, um, and then, you know, before album sales really even start kicking in, she's buying a Benz truck right behind that. Then behind that, this big mansion mm -hmm. in Voorhees, New Jersey. So naturally, you know, Sam is nervous, like, dang, I, Jackie, I think we need to slow down. We don't need to spend this much, buy this much, let's wait a little bit. And Sam is her ex-husband. Right. She, okay. So, you know, but, you know, and I understand why she wanted to live the lavish lifestyle, because let's be clear. Um, she grew up very nicely. She grew up almost how um, your normal white family would grow up. Both her parents were there. They both had careers. Um, Uncle Norman was in the service. After he left the service, I know he worked at the post office and he also had his own cleaning business in Philly. You know, she made it seem like during an interview that her and I did that, you know, she kind of grew up in, in an abusive house. Um, she was raped at nine, raped again at 12, raped again at 13, raped again at 14, claims that she was in uh, therapy. Of course, her mom was schizophrenic, so her mom never did anything about it. Dad, uh, you know, kind of sent her off to live with the mom, but you guys said her mom and dad never split up. Like Uncle they Frank, always- Uncle, Uncle Norman and our friends has never split. So she grew up in a two-parent house. She grew up in a two-parent two household in a pretty, um, nice neighborhood. Actually, only 15 minutes from where she bought her $500,000 house. So that goes to show what type of neighborhood she grew up in, mm. and what type of environment she grew up in. Her parents 
for a black family were actually pretty well off. What did her mom do for a living? I phrase this as a school teacher. <laughs> wow. She's a school teacher for about 25 years. So she just like retired like some years ago. Yep. Okay. And that money that she earned, mm -hmm. Jackie is now spending. Take From my it. understanding, yes. Because when I spoke to her ex-husband, uh, Sam, who is a very, very nice, down-to-earth, just grounded guy, mm -hmm. looks like his credit is good and everything. <laughs> and he walks in and I was just like, you were married mm. to Jackie? That's the same reaction my mom had when Jackie went to introduce. This is Aunt Belinda I'm speaking of. Jackie always mentions Aunt Belinda. So for the world, Aunt Belinda is my mom. Okay. She, that's the aunt that she lived with where she started, but she first started exploring Philadelphia. So again, that's around 13. But yeah, my mom had the same reaction that you did. Only it was, you sure you want to date her? Kind of thing, but my mom kind of kept that to herself. Mm -hmm. Sam says you guys hid the fact that she suffered from a mental illness. You know, we felt like we didn't want her to say, okay, you guys are hating on my situation because everybody's always hating on her, right? We love her. She's our family. So at the end of the day, we want her to have happiness too. This guy is really good for her. Maybe she's going to change for this guy is what we were thinking. Because outside of Sam, out of all the years I've known her, which is all of my life, she has never, ever, ever, ever brought a decent man around us. Sam is the closest you get to it. And you that's guys honest are still to God. Close. Honest to God. Sam seems like he's uh, still really close to your family. He just sent me a, a photo mm -hmm. of him having dinner with uh, Aunt Francis. Yes, Jackie's yep. mom. Mm -hmm. And he said that, you know, when he talked to her, he found out some pretty disturbing things that she was. Um, diabetic, of course, right. and um, she's been using the same needle for almost a month and she can't get her insulin. And he found out that Jackie, of course, had been taking her money. Mm -hmm. And so your aunt has not been able to, uh, not your aunt, I'm sorry, your grandma. Uh, that's your- No, that's my aunt. Okay, your aunt. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to, because it's a lot of family members there. Mm -hmm. um, hasn't been able to, I guess, get her prescriptions filled because she was living with uh, Jackie in mm -hmm. Texas mm -hmm. and I guess shipped her off. Mm -hmm. And now she's not set up and she's calling and asking you guys for money because she can't afford to get her prescription meds because Jackie is drawing all the money from her pension right. to spend it on her and her husband. Correct. From my understanding, Jackie took out a power of attorney. She's been pretty much riding off of this whole um, mental illness and schizophrenia thing um, regarding my aunt for a while. Um, I remember when she first tried to call me to convince me that mental illness runs in our family. I'm like, Jackie, historically, there is no documentation anywhere mm -hmm. that says that our family is mentally ill. Um, this is, I think, all a cover up um, for her behavior and her acting out. The only person that has ever been, where it's ever been acknowledged in the family that there's a mental illness is Jackie. She's the only one that on paper, you can find documentation where she's been um, in, you know, all these psych sessions and, you know, uh, constant counseling and all of that, you know. And like I said, you know, this has been going on since she was a child. It's been many years. So it's just wow. now just at this point, it's like a mental break almost. She's always had mental breaks, but this one here, the public gets to see. So everything that she said, true or false regarding your family, mm -hmm. true or false? Most of it is false. Most of it. Here's what Jackie does. She'll tell you a bit of the truth. And we're going into the whole celebrity thing and my family information. You can't be quick to believe everything Jackie tells you. She takes one piece of the truth or a story somebody told her or something she witnessed and she glorifies it, exploits it, and makes it way bigger. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if somebody touched you on your leg, that person raped you. If somebody found $20, they found $1,000. Um, if she forced herself on you, you forced yourself on her. You get what I'm saying? This has been going on for a long time. This is who Jackie is. And she'll try to convince you. And because she was diagnosed as a loony genius at the age of 13, when my mom first took her to have temporary custody of her, she is very, she's very slick at the mouth, quick on her feet with thinking. So if you're on the outside looking in and you don't know her, you're going to be pulled right in. 
But if you just sit back and ask her the same questions over and over and over again, you'll see she trips on her feet. And and that was my my strategy. And of course, uh, the viewers were not having it. They were like, Tasha, you were too hard on her. And I was like, Guys, listen, I grew up <laughs> with people like this and um, the behavior. It's like you, if you ask them one question, mm. you know, now the second question is going to be something different. Right. And so that's how you're able to just kind of catch the inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. Now, um, back to you for a second. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, your sister, who I wished would sit down, <laughs> uh, claims that uh, Jackie's son, Sam, her only living son, came to live with you and your dad and your mom during the summers, despite, okay, um, your dad raping her. Is that true? He spent holidays with us. You know, my dad's side of the family, they do a lot of family things. We go to Disney World, things of that nature. And Giovanni would be right there with us. So if my dad supposedly raped you at 14 or 15 or however old she said she was, why would you send your son? Because he was with us. You never wanted to spend no time with them. Why did he come with us? Mm. If he raped you and you were uncomfortable and you were scared and, you know, I think she said in an interview, the reason why I didn't want to tell his daughters um, was because, you know, they were females and you, they were young girls. No, she told me at 10, she was drunk and I'm, I'm assuming on something. And she says, your father raped me. And I said, what? At that point, didn't even know what it was, you know, spoke with my dad about it. He actually cried about it. He was just like, why would she, you know, lie to me, a lot of people about something so serious, you know? I, I love Jackie as like a little sister. So for you to sit up here and do that, you know, he's met my entire family. He loves all of us. Like, I just didn't get it. It's weird. It's very weird. Why do you think she's so angry with you all? Well, um, I think it's, it has a lot to do with the way her and Sam fell apart and the fact that we weren't supportive of her wrongdoings. So we were all fine, okay, and all, actually very close um, during their marriage for the most part. You know, Jackie, when she was not around, even when her career had started tanking, if you will, where she wasn't touring as much, um, where she weren't, wasn't getting many gigs or whatever, um, there was this cousin, Danica, that was always over her house watching her child, Sammy, okay, while she was out doing her drinking, partying, playing pool, missing for weeks and days. And if Danica wasn't at the house, Sammy was with Aunt Frances, the same woman that raised Giovanni, okay? And I really feel like that she is angry because once her and Sam's marriage really started, you know, pretty much, you, you knew it was coming to an end. Once it started coming to an end, Jackie, what she wanted to do was to really destroy him, you know, and I get some of it, you know, you're angry, you know, you want him to pay for whatever you guys went through, but he only did to you what you did to him. You cheated on him with Talib Kweli. You came home and told him you cheated on him with Talib Kweli. You wanted to cause drama between him and Talib Kweli. That didn't go down. And so now Sam's frustrated because you continue to cheat. So now he starts cheating and you're mad. Well, you asked for it. So the marriage starts falling apart and you want the family to sit and watch you now be physical with this man because you're trying to bait him and make him be physical back so you can send him to jail. And while we stayed out of it, once you decide you're going to take him to court to bait him and ruin his life, we can't let another black man go to jail for nothing. So that's where it had to stop. And so that's where her, that's where her real built up anger is with the family because one of the cousins, Danica, who was the witness to her trying to abuse Sam and then him kind of defending himself, didn't really beat her up, but defending himself. She showed up to court and because she was really young, her mom showed up too. Um, and from my understanding, I was not there, but from my understanding, the judge asked who these two people were at court. They said that they were the aunt and the cousin of Jackie. And they asked, who were you here for? The plaintiff, which is Jackie. No, we're here for the defendant, which is Sam. And at that point, they threw the case out. They didn't even entertain the case because if your family's showing up to testify for the defendants then something's wrong. Mm. So she's very bitter and angry about that because if she had gotten her way and we allowed her to send an innocent black man to jail, what would have happened to his life? 
Speaking of um, an innocent black man, she said some pretty disturbing things about her own son, her only living son now. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had a chance to speak with him. Mm -hmm. Of course, you, you know, the public, oh, he's just probably saying that. He's just probably denying that because of he doesn't want people to know. Is little Sam autistic? As far as I know, he has never been diagnosed with it. Um, my daughter is actually a psych major and has worked with autistic kids. And um, she has said that he does not have the characteristics of a truly autistic child. Um, autistic children really have a hard time communicating. A lot of times they can't even speak and respond to you. If you go back and research it, they can't even really speak and respond to you dead on when you ask the question. You talk to Sammy, he can respond dead on. Yeah, he seemed very intelligent. I asked him about his grades. He said that he was a straight A student. Mm -hmm. um, he loved video game design. Mm -hmm. And, he, you know, he's currently in college, you know, to study video game design, community mm -hmm. college. Um, and also said that, um, you know, I think during the interview, he needed the interview to end because he was making baked salmon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. Probably, <laughs> that's probably about right. That sounds like Sammy. He's um, actually really intelligent. Um, he probably has that same intelligent level um, that Jackie has, you know. I know the the word, you know, a, a lot of kids nowadays are not cool with the word nerd. Mm -hmm. But in my book, nerd, especially a black nerd, mm -hmm. is an amazing term. Yep. Like, and yeah. And he, he definitely fits that description for okay. sure. Um, I do think that Sammy was traumatized by a lot of what he saw his parents go through. Mm -hmm. Um and at the end of the day, it's effect, It's going to affect you. If you're a child and you're in the house where there's constant disarray and fighting and, you know, yeah, it's going to affect you. Schizophrenia, as far as I know, he's never been diagnosed. I'm sorry, not schizophrenia. That's Aunt Francis. Yes. Aunt Francis has never been diagnosed with schizophrenia. And as far as I know, Sammy has never been diagnosed with being autistic ever. And may I chime in? Sure. Because, yes, please. You know, like I said, you know, I was raised around both of them. Sammy, at the age of one, knew every car passing on the highway. Never been autistic. Sammy and me were having full conversations at the age of two, three. You know, Sammy's probably the smartest kid in the family currently. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he was supposed to actually come to school um, in Florida because he does want to be a video game designer. Autistic where? Sammy. <laughs> Why do you think she says like that about her only living son and puts it on the internet? Yeah, and it's sad because, you know, he probably didn't know she even said that, you know. I would see her, you know, she would say things like that in the past. Never in front of him, but, you know, these YouTube videos and things of that nature. I, I really don't know. He didn't know until I played it yeah, for that, him during and that's our sad. interview. That's I really honestly, sad. Can I chime in? I honestly think that, um, again, how Jackie twists things around. I think she's telling, when she's telling the world that Sam collects a check for Sammy because he's autistic... I think she's telling her own story. That was her plan. Her plan was to have him diagnosed as being autistic and she never got to finish that because Sam took him. If she had gotten that diagnosis, that would probably would have allowed him to get the social security check. That's really what I think. Mm. I'm almost willing to bet my bottom dollar. Again. But he's 18. He is, right. So he would be getting his own money. But you have that thing where you can have, um, you can become a payee. Okay. If the person really can't function on their own. You get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. from my understanding, that's what's going on with Aunt Francis' money. Jackie is her POA. She's supposed to be her POA from my understanding because she can't do things on her own or function on her own. So I think that's how Jackie gains access to the money. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's an easy way to access it. Mm. She's her POA. Mm -hmm. Have you met her? This question's for you. Have you mm -hmm. met her, her new husband? No, and I'm not interested in meeting him. If you have... If you're in your right mind, you can tell the guy's not all the way there. If he wants to come outside and meet his mother, he okay. can. If he wants to come outside and meet his Are stepfather, you the husband? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good. Okay, that's the No man in their right mind, a stand-up man, is going to allow their wife to do what she's doing and sit back and watch it. He's her puppet because he's living off my aunt's money, too. He's broke. As far as I know, he does not have a job. He is not holding it down for them. Jackie is holding it down for them. But Jackie's holding it down for them. VOA of my Aunt Francis's money. Now, I do know that he was in the service, so he probably gets that little check from the service, but I'm a mortgage processor. I do VA loans. They don't get that much money a month. Okay, so he's he's not going to be able to live off of his own money. Yeah, it's interesting to see, like, 
you know, like I think she did a live stream the other night with some other people and she was sitting in the car for six hours and he sat beside her with his head down and said nothing. Right. He's for using six I think, hours. I think he's using her. Mm. I really think he's using her. Jackie, every man that um, she's gotten since I've known her in our adult life, she mentions that she's Jaguar Wright. OK, so a lot of people don't know who Jaguar Wright is. It's sad. Because I think she's very talented, but the truth be told, a lot of people don't know Jaguar, right? If you stream what would have been her biggest song, What Ifs, that video, I think it's like 407 views since 2001. The world is not receiving her music well. So, you know, she's got to get into, you know, I'm Jaguar, right? I did Jay-Z Unplugged, blah, blah, blah. And come on, like a thirsty man? Oh, yeah, I'm going to jump on that because maybe she's got a second shot at her career. Little mm. do they know. The world's not receiving her music well. Like I would, ju I just wish that Jackie would like realize that, like, look, the music that you're making, you dropped two albums. Your first one barely went gold. Your second one did nothing on the independent record label. I just really wish that um, she would see that. Okay, maybe what you're doing is not working. Switch it up, because if she finds her happiness and peace, all of this will stop. The YouTube videos, the attacking the other celebrities, which is all because she's angry because they've all done well. They they found success. She feels like she's just as talented as them or more. So she should have found success, too. I get it. But at the end of the day, how she's going about it is not the right way. And he's less of a man to let her do it. Yeah. And um, I don't personally know Gerald, um, you know, spoke with him on the phone. Last thing he told me. And my mother and my sister is, if you ever step foot in Texas, I'm military trained. I'm going to put a bullet in your head. Um, it was when my cousin and brother passed away. Him and Aunt Jackie were on a rant. We want blood. You know, mind you, he's never even met my cousin. We want blood. Yeah, come to Texas if you want. You'll get a bullet in your head is what he told me. So I never have no plans on meeting him. Sammy didn't even want to meet him. Sammy doesn't want to be there. I'm outside and speak to your mother. I'm right here. I'm right here speaking with. I'm Call the police, honey. Are, do you got 911 on the phone? Perfect. Everything is perfectly fine. No, it isn't because I have all the conversations recorded. Good. I have every last conversation recorded. Good. I'm perfectly. Every fine. last conversation recorded. Let me get over here. I'm perfectly. Then you fine. can come outside and speak to your mother. You're already outside. I'm already. So then, why can't you walk over here and meet no. your stepfather? No. Why can't he? Why can't he meet his stepfather? Why can't Jackie, he meet his stepfather? Jackie. Why can't he meet his stepfather, oh, Tina? 911. Why can't he meet his stepfather? Okay, he's with my uncle for a reason. Not only because my uncle is a level-headed guy, but his mom is a crazy person. She's, you know, at this point is going through some type of mental breakdown. And, you know, I hope she gets the counseling and seeks therapy. But, you know, as far as with Gerald, he sits back and lets her do all these YouTube videos because, like my aunt said, he's very thirsty. He's so big. He sees her followers. She started off with 6,000 followers. She's at like 80,000 something. Mm. So he's looking, you know, she's selling him dreams. She cause She's very convincing. So he probably believes everything she's saying. And that's just kind of what it is with him. Um, do I plan on meeting him? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, I want you to listen to a video because she claims her mom... Is schizophrenic. Her only living son is autistic. So I came across a video the other night that surprisingly like had no views. I was just like, wow. So let me pull up this video because I'm just shocked that everybody in the family is schizophrenic. No. <laughs> so <laughs> this it's the is cat for me. <laughs> <laughs> this is a video, and, and I want you guys to, to each answer. Okay. Right. I want you to give your thoughts on this. So this is a video that she uploaded to her Instagram. Okay. She titled it Jaguar Rides, I guess custody issues. They won't let me see my son. Now, Sam is 18 years old right. in this video. Now, this is with her ex-husband. This is an exchange between her ex-husband, Sam, and his mom. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So now we got Jackie's mom that's schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. Her son is autistic. Now listen. Well, then go and meet your stepfather. No, you stay here. No, he doesn't stay anywhere. Yes, he does. He's 18 years old. You don't tell him what to do. Go meet your stepfather. I'm closing my door, Jackie. You better take your hands off of me, Hello, Tina. I like to call the police, You better please. not put your hands on me. This Hello? woman just put her hands on me. I do. Please, 911, no, come I'm here. At, She's crazy. She's a schizophrenic. Fair she won't enough. let my son uh, out the house. Yet. Uh -uh. Just put her hands on me. I this woman just put her hands on me. Please, 911, come here. She's crazy. She's a schizophrenic. She won't let my son out the house. She just. 
that poor lady, wow. not Miss Tina. Miss Tina. Mm -mm -mm. Like, it's sad. And this is exactly why Sammy doesn't want to be here. Because this is what she does constantly. That's is this sad. Is, why, is this why you think um, her son... Uh, because he had talked about this. Now, this part of his interview that I did with him, I'm not going to put it out. Um, but I want you guys to speak on it. Mm -hmm. um, he said that he wanted to, like, kill himself. It, do you think this has anything to do with it? Like, just Look how being... she acts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look how she acts. Who wouldn't? I mean, you know, like I said, you know, I when my Uncle Sam came around is when we honestly saw her. You know, growing up, my grandma always had my cousin. You know, when she did the tour thing, Sammy was with us all the time. Aunt Jackie would be running the streets. When Uncle Sam actually came into the picture, I was actually happy because, you know, my cousin was happy. Sammy was happy. You know, things were getting better. You know, my Uncle Sam would take us to go get pizza. He would take us to the movies. She never was there. She never was there. Who I wouldn't blame him. You know, I would want to do the same thing. Look how she acts. Mm -hmm. You going to do that to poor Miss Tina? And then poor Uncle Sam? It's just like a son. Now, this is uh, her ex-husband's mom. Right. So she's schizophrenic too. <laughs> she's never been diagnosed with being schizophrenic. Jackie, again, again, I'm going to say, for the, for the whole world to hear, Jackie makes the truth an explosive lie. You cannot believe anything that she says, okay? She went to that woman's house to harass, is basically what she did in that video, from what I gather, okay? That is, we're Miss Tina and her son reside, okay? So you go to their house to do all of that. And then you're yelling to call 911 because you're being touched and hit on. Right? When this lady's just trying to get you out her door and close her door. Close off the drama. Jackie has, again, always been this type of person. You come to somebody's house or their place uh, where they reside. It could be on the street. It could be on the street. You start drama and then you claim to be a victim. That's all she's been doing. She does it all of her life. It will continue on. So it seems like everyone else has the problem except her. What do you think she's going to say? I want to start with you. When she sees this interview <laughs> she with her niece. <laughs> she's going to be upset. And honestly, like I said, we have no relationship. Never did. You know, once my um, cousin cut her off, we I did too. Like, at the end of the day, Which is your, her, your mother. Her, her late son. Right. Your mother. And there's certain things that shouldn't be said. My cousin called me crying multiple times. Jamie, do you know how it feels to know your mom lives around the corner and doesn't love you? I'm going to take that serious. Mm. So, and then just seeing how, you know, she did my uncle. My uncle's a great man. He played a very big part in my childhood. He was the only one who actually used to take us out, take us to the movies, you know, take us to go get pizza, mini golf. She never was there. So she's going to be upset. And be upset. This is, you know, I really honestly, you know, hope she takes this and looks and reflects and gets some help because it's too much. It honestly, I honestly thought the whole thing was going to go away, but it was the Jamie Wallace from South Philly raping me for me. So if something had to be said, you're going too far. You're pushing people's buttons. You're bullying at this point. It's not funny. So that was the last straw for me. What do you think she's going to say? She um, I think you. she's definitely going to be upset. She's going to say that the family is jealous of her and we have nothing to be jealous of. All of her family around her are doing pretty well. They have bought homes. They're married. Not everybody's marriage is doing well. She'll talk about that, but that's the rest of the world. A lot of people, Cardi B and, and Offset have problems. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so we, are, we don't need to do, oh, this one's, you know, marriage is failing and blah, blah, blah. We're going to talk about the real. All of her family around her are doing well. Look at her niece's apartment. This is where we're doing this interview. Yeah. Everybody's doing well and is successful. They have careers. They're making their own money. They're happy. They're living their lives. While she's doing all of this, making the family look crazy and look bad. It's embarrassing. And we sat around for a year at least and watched this transpire and said nothing because we thought that she would be able to fix it and resolve it on her own. And she hasn't been able to. Uh, Charlie Mack, he's a close friend of Will Smith's. He put up a video on Instagram and asked, where's Jack's family? Why isn't Jack's family saying anything? Y'all got to see that this girl has mental issues. Why aren't y'all saying anything? And the truth is, is that we have tried to all talk to her. Um, again, me and Jackie were very close. And one of our last conversations was when Giovanni was murdered. She uh, wanted me to help her with a memorial she was trying to do down at Warm Daddy's, which is a place she used to perform at. 
She was mad that the family had put a memorial together that she talks about a lot in the neighborhood of Frankfurt and Philadelphia. Yeah, it's a pretty tough neighborhood, but the truth is that's where Giovanni roamed. That's where his friends were. That's where he lived a lot of his uh, teenage life. So the fact that a memorial was being put together there made sense because the people that he knew and grew up around him were going to be there. Regardless of the fact that somebody got murdered at that memorial, okay, the truth is, is we were doing what he would have wanted. You know, she didn't really know her son, you know, because she did not spend enough time with him as an adult. So she's going to be upset and angry and she's going to talk to the world and say we betrayed her and so on. But the, the truth needs to get out. The truth. And at this point now, we can no longer sit back and keep watching her make these videos, trash celebrities, that whole WCW thing. I'm going to need people to stop being so big on supporting that because you can't sit here and tell me that your WCW movement is to support black women. But you consistently trash Beyonce, Mary J. Blige, Alicia Keys, Jill Scott, all these other people. You're talking about these women and bashing them for the same things you do. You talk about Jill Scott uh, sleeping with a guy that you slept with first, but you slept with three men behind your sister, at least three. Your sister slept with the men. You knew she slept with them and you went right behind these behind her and slept with these men. You have some real she has some real issues like I really want her to get help. We love her, but it's time to stop all this nonsense now. It's really time. We hide all of her secrets. We know a lot. And we've been hiding it from the world and just kind of sitting back and just watching her self-destruct and just hoping that she fixes it. So since she doesn't want to fix it and she wants to, I dare you to do an interview and trash the family. Now we're going to tell her secrets so she can stop this nonsense and so that the world can see, OK, maybe I really do need to second guess what she's telling and putting out there. It's the, you know, uh, going to sleep. And waking up in different countries for me, because <laughs> I'm like, you need a passport. You have to go through TSA and someone managed to put you on a flight and you wake up in a different country and they're calling you a different name. That's a part of her mental issues. Have you ever been diagnosed with any sort of mental illness? Yeah. Dissociative. Because of the trauma that I've experienced, I have psychotic breaks at times. Okay. I lose time. Okay. I become something or someone else mm. until I'm me again. How? Like, like, what do you become? Like, what person? I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. What I can tell you is, is on more than one occasion, I've woken up in a hotel room or woken up in a different country. Oh, don't know how I got there. Someone's playing. And Tasha, like I said, you know, <laughs> I was around this lady. I knew at the age of seven that sis was a liar. Okay. This is all she does is lie. It's like sad at this point. I mean, I don't believe anything she's ever said. We laugh about it. She's funny. Let's not, you know, let's not get that mess. She's very funny. Mm -hmm. Funny. She's very entertaining. Okay. But yeah, very delusional. I mean, I feel like, you know, half of the people she spoke about, she's probably their number one fan. Yeah. I never met these people a day in her life, you know? So <laughs> it's just like, can you really believe that? I was just shocked at just how many people were just like, just really sucked in, you mm -hmm. know? And, we, we're baffled too. We and sit I, and watch it and just shake our heads. And I get it. You know, she uses a lot of things that trigger people. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're sexually assaulted, when you're, when you're raped, um, when you're, you know, a single mom, just, it's just certain things that will like, you know, will, I guess, change people's perceptions about you. Like, oh, she gets a pass mm -hmm. because this happened. That's a common thing with her. If you notice, she mentioned that my son was sexually assaulted. She said that I was intimate with the judge in, in Dallas. Yeah. She judge also Cooks. said that you were living in her house. Um, in Judge Cook's house? <laughs> no, in, 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 I guess, the house that she had purchased, Jaguar. Um, and it was a very expensive house at the time. And she caught you with a transgender uh, woman. Well, I mean, you know, he a trisexual. He a bisexual. He'll get you, know, you buy him something and he'll try anything once. 
Wait a minute. Didn't you say you was putting out a thousand dollars for anybody that had pictures of him? I'm I'm still giving up stimulus package for them pictures. Wait, wait, tell them what the pictures is. Just just let them know. So before you go, this is I all. need lewd sexual acts with a man or transgender person because I know he do both. He go by Big Sam. He puts three G's at the end of it on all the sex sites, and he's been a regular at the sex clubs for the past 15 years. He's still stupid enough to probably put his dick on the internet. I I got mad at him like, yo, our, our, my son goes on the internet. If he bumps into you, dude, yeah. and don't nobody know I don't show my face. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not gay. Um, I have friends that are, okay. and you know, I have no problem with the LGB. I forget what LGBTQ, it's called. LGBTQ. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not. Okay. I have no problem with the community. Okay. Um, I have a lot of friends that are, um, just not. Debbie, fuck my mom's man. Fuck Belinda man. I believe she fucked one of Maxine's dudes too. Debbie, a whole whore. Running around lying to everybody, talking about she was a virgin when she got married. A virgin went. I didn't know you could swap out a beat up pussy for a new one. Where they doing that at? And if they doing it now, they surely wasn't doing it back in the 80s. That technology did not exist. I remember when Aunt Belinda told me about how the bitch was getting fucked in the vestibule. In the vestibule! You wouldn't even let the nigga take you to the blue moon. That's how cheap that nigga was that was fucking you. He fucked you on your doorstep, bitch, and then walked away. Dirty dumbass. And these niggas like to talk shit about me. Oh, but they was all in cahoots. Somebody said not the blue moon man. Rest in peace. Yes, yes. Bitch couldn't even get a nigga to take it to the blue moon. Like only scumbags will take it to the blue moon. You couldn't even get a you couldn't get a scumbag to take you to the blue moon. Your pussy ain't worth shit. The fuck you in the vestibule and walk off. All of their daddies left. Shit, Debbie husband left because he said God said if he wanted to serve him properly, he had to leave her. Who the fuck? And guess what? He was right. He was right. But I got to drive all the way to Philly. And then when I get there, these pussies going to stand on the porch. He can't leave. He ain't leaving. Fuck you, bitch. What do you mean my son can't leave? He's not even supposed to be here. I actually had to go and get, get my pool case and take my brake stick and break it down and threaten to start working all those motherfuckers out if my son ain't walk out the door. Then when my son tried to run out the door, fucking fat ass, hoe ass, dick sucking ass Danica, oh, fat dick suck, gonna grab my son by the back of his shirt and drag him into that piece of shit ass house riddled with rats and roaches and bed bugs. Justin used to say, just call the police and have him violated. And I, you know what I would tell Just? Yeah. Same thing I told Stead Roy. Same thing I told Alex. Every ex that I ever lost because of all of the pressure that was what was put on my relationships from that fuck ass nigga. I don't feel like going back to court. I hate the fucking law, yo. Everybody always want fuck with me. Oh, but when Jag come up, oh, when oh, when Jag get up, oh, oh, she's crazy, oh, 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 well, if you knew I was crazy, why are you fucking with me, dummy? <laughs>
all know that a fresh yoni brings on a whole new level of confidence. So visit EmbracePangea.com. And of course, I got my winos covered for a discount. So use the coupon code Tasha K for 10% off your first order. AdamandEve.com. I'm talking toys, bondage, lingerie, and so much more. Plus, they have 24-7 customer service. So you can order at 3 a.m. if you ain't coming, if you get me, okay? And if something isn't working out, you can send it back within 90 days, no hassle. And if that's not enough, you can also take pleasure in knowing that 20% of their profits goes to help fight the spread of HIV around the world. So go on ahead and log on to adamandeve.com. Use the code Tasha K for 50% off one item plus free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. Some exclusions apply now, but hurry up and visit adamandeve.com so they can make you come. Let's put the wine down for a second because at times like this, we need to take a shot of the olive leaf extract because the olive leaf boosts our immune system and it has been known to reverse high blood pressure, lupus, diabetes, and certain cancers. Check them out at myoliveleaf.biz to learn more and to order or simply click the link below in the description box. Now back to the wine. All right. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. I have a question to ask. Um, all of you intelligent and grown folk, you know, everybody's entitled to believe what they want to believe. But if you were in fact raped, raped by your sister's husband, would you leave your kids? This is before Sam took custody. This is way before Sam took custody. This is when Jag was on the road. Jag was pursuing music. Would you leave your children with your rapist? I'll give you a moment. Answer in the comments. I'll give you a moment. I'm just going to sit right here. Would you, after your, sus your, your sister's husband was a crackhead, your sister is a crackhead, her sister has a, a wonderful job. The husband, the sister's husband, owns his own business. But these two raised both of her kids while she was on the road. Would you leave your children with your crack-smoking rapist? I wait. Oh, wait, these are for the diehard, oh, something must have happened to her fans. Ain't nothing happened to this girl. Nothing. On everything. Nothing. After part three airs, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened to her. Um, If you were on Patreon, you already know. Um, And so I will relay it to the viewers here. The sister could not speak on camera. There was a lot of family animosity. Um, they just want this to go away. They're hoping Jag will just shut up. But the sister, the sister, she told me what happened. She told me exactly what happened. And it wasn't, it ain't what y'all think it is. It ain't got nothing to do with no rape or no sexually assaulting Nothing, okay? And with that being said, we'll be back tomorrow night for part three. We're going to close this and bring it home, okay? Now we got to go. I love y'all. Oh, guys, sorry. If you have tips on your favorite celebrities, please feel free to send me an email via unwind with Tasha K at gmail.com if you want to market on my platform. Please feel free to send us an email via marketing at unwindwithtashak.com. If you want your question answered on happy hour, meaning you got something that's bothering you, something you need answers to, you want to write in, please feel free to write in via jasmine at unwindwithtashak.com. That is J-A-S-M-I-N-E at unwindwithtashak.com. Uh, Teddy is uh, actually exhausted because he's watched this thing like eight times. I really hope you guys are enjoying. Thank you to almost all 12,000 of you guys watching uh, this evening. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody that donated, okay? We got a lot of people to pay here. We appreciate all the proceeds, okay? And with that being said, now we got to go. Bye. <laughs>